بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين. Peace be upon you, our respected viewers, and welcome to a new episode of Shia Calendar with me, Ali Maash. Today is the 18th of Rajab. It is a sad event. As we send our condolences to the Imam of our time, Al Mahdi Al Muntadar, peace be upon him, on the remembrance of the passing of the son of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his family, Ibrahim ibn Muhammad, peace be upon him. The coinciding event that also falls on this day is the day on which the tyrant Yazid ibn Muawiyah grasped, usurped, caliphate, and took rule. We will focus on the important event by shedding light on Ibrahim, the son of the Apostle of Allah, peace be upon him and his family. The Apostle of Allah, on the sixth year after Hijrah, announced and began to propagate his divine prophetic message to the world, inviting all of creation to the religion of submission, the religion of Islam. Thus, he began sending a group of Muslims as his ambassadors to the various rulers and kings around the vast continents. He wrote a letter to each of them and invited them to Islam and announced to them the ruling associated with those who submit to Islam. Of the various points that was mentioned in the letter, the one who submits to the divine message will be safe, protected, and taken care of by the Islamic authority. The content of all letters somewhat contained the same message. He sent the likes of Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a to Egypt to deliver the letter to the ruler of Alexandria, al muqawqas When the ruler of Alexandria read the letter, he took it with respect and stamped it, and gave it to his maid to take care of it. He replied to it with all respect, and he sent it with the messenger along with the gift. He, the ruler of Alexandria, knew that Muhammad is a prophet to be respected, so he wanted to retain the favor. He sent maidens as gifts to the Apostle of Allah, and that maiden was Maria the Coptic al Qubtiya, and her sister Serene, and also a bondwoman named Jaria to be servant to the maiden. However, it is important to note that although the ruler of Alexandria responded with respect, he never did convert to Islam. Maria, or can be uttered as Mary or Maryam, was from Hafan in a region located in az -Zaqa. She was not a Muslim at the time, but she belonged to Ahl al-Kitab, people of the book. Thus, the Prophet accepted the gift of al muqawqas Maria, who is known to be from the daughters of the Simon by historians, is reported to have converted to Islam by the Apostle of Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, chose her as his own wife, and as for her sister, Serene, he gifted her to his poet, Hassan ibn Thabit, and he married her, and from this marriage, Abdurrahman was born. Maria, who was from a tribe called Copt, the Coptics, and for that reason, she is referred to as, by the historians and tradition, as Mary the Coptic, peace be upon her. She was a pious lady and sincere in her religion. She was highly respected by the Apostle of Allah and was generous and honorable in his eyes. He paid and placed a lot of attention upon her. After the loss of Lady Khadija, peace be upon her, the Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, placed a lot of attention upon her. After Lady Khadija, peace be upon her, she was the second one of his wives to bore him a child and because of this, some of his other wives used to carry envy and jealousy towards her, such as Aisha and Hafsa, who even came to the point where they accused her of adultery. When Lady Maria, peace be upon her, came close to the end of her pregnancy, the midwife who was Salma, the wife of Abu Rafa', informed her husband to inform the Apostle of Allah about the birth of his child, who was Abraham, peace be upon him. The Prophet was so happy of this good news that he gifted Abu Rafa' a servant as a sign of thanks for informing him of his son's pure birth. This beautiful and auspicious occasion took place on the 8th of Dhul-Hajjah 
eighth year after Hijrah. On the seventh day, he sacrificed a sheep for him, cut his son's hair, and he gave silver equal to the weight of his cut hair. These are general practices enforced by the Prophet peace be upon him and his family, which have become a sunnah till today. The birthday of Abraham made the other wives of the Prophet jealous, and as a result, they put Lady Maria through a lot of pain and suffering. Unfortunately, we do not have enough time to go through all of these details in this short episode. This son of the Prophet did not live for a very long time, and he passed away on the 18th of Rajab, 10 after Hijrah, while he was only 18 months old. He was buried in al baqiyah and the Prophet was in an intense grief over this loss. In a report, it is narrated that he said, This grief will make everyone cry and render the hearts in sadness, but we say nothing that makes God discontent. In this tradition, the Prophet is teaching us that when facing a tragedy, the one to return to is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because all souls will eventually return to their Creator. On the night on which Abraham passed away, a solar eclipse occurred and everyone thought that it was because of the loss of his son Abraham. But the Prophet had corrected them and informed them that this eclipse is a natural phenomenon and it is not related to his son's death. The Prophet wanted to rid the minds of superstitions and ordered his nation to perform a special prayer when witnessing an ayah, son from Allah, this prayer called Salat al-Ayat. My dear viewers, to conclude, we will report a couple more reports from the Holy Household, which speak of the passing of Abraham. These reports will give us an insight, and from it examples and lessons can be extrapolated. In a report which we mentioned briefly earlier, narrated on the authority of Imam al-Sadiq, peace be upon him. He said, when Abraham passed away, the Prophet cried and said, the eyes are crying and the heart is rendered. However, we do not say anything which discontents God. He then turned to his son Abraham and said, O oh Abraham, we are in grief over your death. Some of the companions of the Prophet saw the Prophet was weeping and was in grief and were surprised by this action. Hence, they began to object this and said, You told us not to cry for the dead, yet now you are crying for the death of your loved ones. The Prophet said, I had never told you not to cry for the death of your loved ones, as these emotions show the sympathy and kindness, and a person who does not sympathize with others is not blessed by God. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, peace be upon him, the commander of the faithful, took care of the ghusl of the body of Abraham and shrouded him. A group of Banu Hashim performed the funeral processions with the Prophet and buried him in the cemetery of al baqiyah That is what we have for you today for Abraham, the son of Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. We pray that you benefited from this program and we ask Allah to grant us the divine guidance so that we may continue to serve him by serving you. Peace be upon you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.